Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Ilum Jr., Dunamis Christian Center. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Um, we're going to have a powerful time this morning in the Word of God. I'm just so happy for each of you who are tuning in, who are watching in this season. I'm telling you what, this is the season for Jesus. He is Lord. Man, I tell you, we're coming up to Easter um, celebration and all of that. I'm telling you, God is just so awesome to have kept us all this time. To Word of God, uh, we're going to release to you today. It's going to be powerful. Make sure you tune in and get your pens and your paper because God's going to bless you. And listen, um, call a friend, text them, let them know that Jesus is in the house. Watch this. Great. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles up to Galatians 2. Galatians 2 and 20. We've been talking about the new covenant. New covenant grace. New covenant grace. Somebody said new covenant grace. There's a difference in the old covenant and the new covenant. And if you don't understand this, you will not live in victory in this dispensation. We need to make sure we understand what Jesus has done and keep reminding ourselves what he's done so we can tap into something powerful. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Look what it says in Galatians 2 and 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So in other words, everyone now, because of Jesus, our faith is in Jesus, in the faith of what he did for us. I'm crucified with Christ. In other words, um, in the operation of God, when he died, I died. When he rose, I rose. Glory to God. When, when, he, when he ascended, I ascended. When he sat at the right hand of God the Father, I I was seated in him. So we understand we are crucified. Why is that important? Because whatever Jesus accomplished, we accomplish. Whatever victory he achieved, we achieve. It is the only reason why we're here today. You're not just here because you got on something new. You're not just here because you, you know, you don't feel blue. <laughs> you're not just here, you know, because you decided to come. We're here because Jesus got a victory for us, and I'm crucified in Christ Jesus. So whatever he's accomplished, I've accomplished. So when he's seated, I'm seated in that authority. Why is that important? We have authority over everything that's don't line up to the word. And so we got to understand I'm crucified. Somebody say I'm crucified. Amen. And I love this here. After we are crucified with Christ, we need to have a mindset of the new covenant. So it keeps reading here, um, very in 21, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. How many are frustrating the grace of God in this dispensation today? <laughs> you know, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, righteousness, um, how did you, why are you righteous? Are you righteous because you did something right? Or are you righteous because Jesus made you righteous? And that, amen, because it says you frustrate the grace of God every time you try to do it on your own effort, your own ability, what you can do, what you can accomplish, everything you can do right, how you can pray, how you can fast, whatever you can do, you just frustrate the grace of God. So we got to make sure we, does, we don't do that. Amen. I love it here. In the uh, Amplified Bible says, therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its own purpose. I do not set aside um, and frustrate, nullify the grace, the unmerited favor of God. For if justification, righteousness, quittal from guilt comes through observing the rituals of the law, then Christ the Messiah is ground, died groundlessly and no purpose in vain. His death, oh man, can you, can you imagine that? Think about that. If we don't have this mindset under the new covenant, Jesus died for nothing. 
He, I mean, what he died for won't benefit you. So what we got to do is keep renewing our mind and constantly visit this to make sure we stay in line with what the new covenant is saying. Because very easily you can get off and begin to begin to think of uh, uh, performance-based religion, the reason why you'll get blessed. And so that is so very important. This new covenant, amen. I love it. The new covenant. Somebody said the new covenant. Amen. Matter of fact, out of two or three witnesses, look at Galatians 5. It, it begins to um, talk a little bit more about that. Galatians 5, amen. Look what it says in Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith um, uh, with Christ made, has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So in other words, what this is saying, once you're in grace, once you understand that it's his unmerited favor, unearned and undeserved favor, what Jesus has done for us, independent of us, amen, what he's done. He said, now that you get this, stand fast and don't go back to bondage. Don't go back to the law. Don't go back to trying to do something to get a relationship with God. Don't go back to trying to be circumcised. In those days, their thing was, I got to get circumcised. Every Jew, I have to get circumcised if I want a relationship with God, if I want his favor, if I need him on my side, I got to be circumcised. Paul showed up and said, wait a minute, because of Christ, we don't, there is no thing that we have to do but believe on him now. And so if you keep reading, he began to tell the Galatians, he said, look at that in verse 2, behold, I, I Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ has profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man, look at verse 3, that is circumcised, that is, um, he is a debtor to do the whole law. In other words, if you want to live this way, Paul said, you got to keep the whole law. You can't just keep some of it. See, James 2.10 says, if you, if you offend in one point, you have to keep the whole law. If you don't keep the whole law, you're guilty of all. So you can't be saying, I'm going to do 88% things right, and then, uh, 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 then the other part I'm not. Or the 99% right, and then miss that 1%. No, you got to be perfect. That means you can't, be, you can't do anything. And some of you who talk about, I'll be perfect, I can do it. I can do the Ten Commandments. No, 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 you can't. But what about this? It's 613 laws in all. So what about the 513 other? When you eat, eat a little meat or uh, uh, a, a little pork chop. You can't eat your ribs. You won't be eating your crab down your legs. It was always, he did that to let everybody know they couldn't do it. He didn't do it so they can have some rules and regulations to live right. He did it to prove to them, you would not be able to be successful in life without Christ. So today, we don't do that, but we still add our own today. You know, you, you can't wear pants. You can't, you can't, um, you can't um, wear, you can't wear, um, you can't wear what? What else y'all wear? Can't wear makeup. Please wear some makeup. <laughs> Amen. Your hair, your hair got to be nappy. And, and sometimes, you know, put a little thing on your head, you know. Praise him, Jesus. Praise him, Jesus. Y'all remember that? But I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm just saying you can't, all those things, if you want to do it, fine, but you can't do it to be right with God. Amen. And that's what people are doing. And what we're doing, we're saying, I'm praying five hours. How long you pray? Um, I pray uh, one hour a day. How long you pray? Oh, about five. Oh, Lord, that's all you pray, five, five minutes a day? Oh. And you feel inadequate because you don't let add up and they doing it for with the wrong motives. God don't love you because you pray five hours a day. Amen. 
He loved the person who played five minutes just like he loved five a day. But we figure if we do a lot for God, I deserve some, some response from God. Now I'm trying to tell you, you got to make sure you do that, but you're doing it with the right motive. You got to also make sure your motives stay right in the body of Christ. Because a lot of people I'm talking to who gifted, the gifted people, the people who always know everything, the people who's everything, the people who pay their tithes, the people who never do anything wrong, the people who know, who can walk around, know they've been holy this week. You are the one I'm talking to. Because sometimes we can do all of that and then think you're going to get a blessing based on what you do and somebody else don't do it, don't deserve the blessing. Under the old covenant, you are correct. But under the new covenant, we all get it because we believe on Jesus. And we do all those things because it's the right thing to do because I'm serving him and I'm paying him back for how good he's been to me. That's why I do it, but I don't do it to try to have a performance because I'm just like these people who got circumcised and Paul showed them well, you can't do that anymore. And verse 4 says, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whomsoever you are justified by the law, ye are falling from grace. Do you know what that means? We say falling from grace is when somebody fell in sin. You know, you know, you heard that pastor over there. You know, yeah, it was on the news, man. They said he, 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 he was falling from grace. He fell from grace. That ain't what, where we get that from? Can you read? No, let's look and see what falling from grace is. No, because really, those persons who fell, who didn't, didn't fall from grace, he fell into grace. Because so, the Bible said where sin abound, grace does much more abound. No, this, you can't take scripture out of context. What does this mean? Let's read it. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Verse 4. What do you mean? No power to produce an outcome. He, you know, no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. You, are the, you, you think you are righteous, are the, righteous by the law, by your performance. If you do that, thinking that you got to do this and do that, then you are falling from grace. Ye are falling from grace. In other words, when a person stops depending upon God and starts depending on self-effort is when he's fell from grace. Are you depending on your self-effort? When you do, you are falling from grace and Christ is no effect to you. In other words, you can be saved for 50 years and, you know, love God on your way to heaven one day, but yet on the earth, Christ is no effect. You can't get Christ to do nothing. You can't get your blessing. You can't get your healing. You can't get your favor. Everything he died for, you can't receive it because Christ now has become no effect unto you, not because you did something wrong. It's because you depend on yourself or others others more than him. Mm. And so what we got to do is make sure, wait a minute, I don't want to fall from grace. I don't want to come to church every Sunday and fail from grace. Walk around with a falling from grace sign over my head. I don't even know it because I'm doing everything by the law. Um, amen. Praise God. I know some of you want me to shut up. I just felt that. Shut up. <laughs> they, they came up on my spirit. Shut them up. I'm like, shut them up. Is somebody in here saying, shut them up? <laughs> I'm going to keep on preaching up in here. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to keep on preaching till you fall out and wallow. <laughs> Amen. Christ is become of no effect. Think about that. So falling from grace... To fall from, fall from being dependent, fall from being dependent on God, back to self-dependence. Mm. To fall from trusting what God has already done through His finished work, back to trusting what He can do to make it happen. So in other words, that's what we got to guard against that. Everybody in here don't need to come to church and do this if yet you don't depend totally on Jesus. Depend on him. 
depending on him. Somebody said, how, how you know God's going to show up and give you an Amos 9? Because you've been perfect this year? No, 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 I haven't been perfect, but I believe on him. I'm depending on Jesus. I, my trust is in Jesus. I, how you know you're going to get your healing? You know what the doctor said? I, look, I know, I know, I know I don't get up and pray at 5 o'clock every morning like you. But one thing I do know, I depend on Jesus. And because I depend on him, I trust him. All of my trust, all of my dependency is on Jesus. I depend on him. My in other words, my confidence is in him. My trust is in him. My faith is in him. I'm resting in him. I'm leaning on him. When you stay right there, then you won't ever fall from grace. Fall from grace. Anybody understand that? Say amen. amen. Praise God. So fall from grace, that's what it means, man. I'm telling you right now, we need to understand that grace is unmerited favor. But I'm telling you, a lot of people unearned, undeserved, but don't get the chance to get it because we have fallen from grace and don't even know it. Falling from grace is vital because it tells us you won't receive anything. This, I think I got the message Bible on that. Let me, let me show you what that's reading. Then I'm going on because, you know, but look what it says here. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I, feel, I feel a little strange spirit in here today. Sure. You know, it's picking up. I'm picking up a little strange spirit. <laughs> I love it when the strange spirits come in here. So that means you don't want to be here, but God sent you here so I can preach the gospel to you. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to keep on preaching. I don't know. It may be on the line there, the strange spirit. I don't know who it is, but I feel a little strange spirit. Come on, let's keep preaching. Amen. Amen. Let's, get, let's look at the Amplified Bible. Let's go a little further. Amen. Um, I love it here. I mean, the Message Bible. Look what it says in the Message Bible uh, in Galatians 5. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So, so take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system, at the same moment, Christ's hard-worn gift of freedom is squandered. I repeat my warning. The person who accepts the ways of circumcision trades all the advantages of free life in Christ for the obligation obligations of a slave life of the law. I expect you would never intend this, but, but this, is, this is what happened. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you cut off, you are cut off from Christ. You fall from grace. Meanwhile, we unexpectedly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. For in Christ, neither our, our most contentious religious nor disregard our religious amounts to anything. What matters is something far more interior. Faith expresses its love. In other words, what this is saying is now we don't live lawless. The law is not bad. You just can't keep it. The law says it's holy. So I'm not talking against the law. I'm just saying the law that God created, you can't keep it. It's holy. It's, it, it, is, it is not bad. But he said it is the spirit now that's in us that's going to lead us to a prosperous life. In other words, the Holy Spirit now, you don't need a law on stones. What you have is the Holy Spirit who has love in you. The love, the law of love is in you now. The Holy Ghost has shed it love in our hearts. And that love, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So that's not, see, we, we are free from commandments. We have the law of love. Because if you love me, you won't steal from me. If you love me, you won't kill me. 
If you love me, you're not going to bear false witness. If you love me, you're not going to make adultery. If you love me. Oh, yeah. Amen. So I'm telling you, so we still got to say that because sometimes I get in there, we might be in fruit with the law, the law. I'm mad at the law. No, no. He put the law. It's holy. It's perfect. But we just couldn't keep it. Oh, I miss. Am I talking to anybody? I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this because this is, this is vital. This is, this is important because sometimes if you don't break it down and... Um, 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 1 Timothy 1 and 8. Look at that right quick. 1 Timothy 1 and 8, and I, I promise you, I'll have y'all out of here as soon as possible. Anybody getting the word? Anybody ready? Amen. Amen. Look what it says here. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. This is something we need to know when you're explaining this, the new covenant. We need to ex know how to explain it because there were people that come to you who, who saying that what is, is the, the law is not bad. We know it's not, the law is not bad because look what it says here. But look what it says. We need to understand this to, other, other to be free to receive this message because look what it says here. I love it in verse 8. First Timothy 1 and verse 8. But we know that the law is good. Somebody said the law is good. If a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for a lawless, disobedient, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for unholy, uh, profane, for murderers, fathers, and, and murderers of mother and manslayers. So in other words, what it's saying, the law is not bad, and the law is not for a righteous man. That means I'm righteous. If you are righteous, the law is not for you. Mm. Do you see that? You are righteous, but it is for sinners. It is for to tell somebody you don't measure up. It is for to tell the lawless, uh, the disobedient. See, you're, you're, everybody needs God. Everybody needs Jesus. I don't need Jesus. I'm all right. No, are you the law is to let you know you don't measure up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we can use the law not for righteousness. I'm already saved. I'm already Christ. I'm already in him. I, 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 the Holy Spirit leads me now. I don't need the law to lead me. The Holy Spirit does. But for somebody who don't know Christ, who try to get in, like somebody said one time, Jesus is not the only way. Well, I'm trying to tell you, I don't know whatever way you're going in there. <laughs> Jesus, if Jesus is not the only way, how you getting there? Because he said in his word in John 14 that, you know, I am the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So you can't get into the presence of the Father without Jesus. You can't get in any other way. So I can take the law and bring them to the end of themselves. Say amen to that. Praise the Lord. Pastor James T. Illum. Dunamis Christian Center. Look, I'm so happy to share during this season, Jesus. You know, um, it's coming up Easter um, Sunday, and I just want to personally invite everyone out. It's been a rough season, y'all, but I'm telling you something. Jesus came for us. Let's come back for him. And I'm telling you, let's come in. And I'm telling you, I'm just so excited that uh, as we go in, you're going to come in. I'm telling you, it's going to be very very awesome we have everything set up for you miracles in the atmosphere there's something powerful that's happening in this season with jesus his grace this year the lord is leading me to talk about um it was his grace his unmerited favor his abounding love infinite love that he showed and poured out and continue to pour out on us all the time. And I'm telling you right now, I just want to encourage everyone. He said, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together. So I'm, I'm just, just want you to just think about coming back because he came back for us. And we're going to come back in and they're going to have an awesome time. There are going to be two services this year. Uh, let's just walk in for a second. It's going to be two services this year. And our, um, and we have social distancing in here. Um, you could wear your mask if you like. It, it's going to be very um, safe. That's why we're having two services.
to make it comfortable for everyone so you can know that when we come back, it's the time to just all come back and kind of like just worship. There's a difference in online and in his presence together. There's an anointing when we come together. That's why I think the attack was on us this year in the last couple of years to keep us separate. But I'm telling you, Jesus came for us. Now we're coming back for him to spread the word. We need you to um, get excited about this Easter. Listen, I'm telling you right now, uh, all you have to do is come in and, and, and sit where you want to sit. It's going to be awesome. Listen, also, there are the ways to do it is um, call in and register. Amen. Um, do the Miss Christian Center call in at 757-82-POWER, 757-82-POWER and register uh, for Easter for those two services. And I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. We come together. We usually have a annual play. Y'all know our play we usually have. We're not having that annual play, but we are having a drama invitation. It's something that you've never seen and it's going to be powerful. So come and what service you want, 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Amen. It's going to be powerful, man. And we're going to praise Jesus. We're going to give him glory. We're going to praise God because it's so good to get back into the house of God because he's been faithful to us. Think about all that he's done and kept us. And I just want to personally thank everyone as we close for all you've done during these two years. Um, you stay connected. You're, you're sold into the kingdom. You're and we all come together, we made it through. And now we just believing to go to the next level together. So Easter would be a good time for all can just decide to come on back into the house. Cause like I said, uh, he came for us, let's come back for him. And I'm telling you, it's gonna be a blessing. So remember, you the Miss Christensen, 6148 Jefferson Avenue, Duper News, Virginia. Um, eight o'clock and 11 o'clock, uh, August, I mean, April the 17th on Easter Sunday, and it's going to be powerful. I love to see you there. Um, we're going to give the word, but we're also going to have a drama presentation, um, presentation that will bless you to show it was his grace. We love you. This is Pastor E, and we'll see you in the house.